Hi crafters, it's Chloe from Chloe's Creative Cards and today I've got a little bit of a different video for you all. I'm going to be sharing lots of tips, tricks and techniques as to how to get the most out of your wow embossing powder. So I did ask um, maybe a week or so ago in the Facebook group about what you struggle with with embossing and we got lots of different answers so hopefully I'm going to take you from start to finish, explain about all of the fabulous um, embossing powders that wow do, tell you what I would use them for, what I wouldn't use them for and all such like. So hopefully you're going to learn lots about heat embossing in today's video. video. So I wanted to start by explaining a little bit about WOW Embossing Powder and who they are. As some of you may know that have been following us for, oh my word, it must be coming up, it must be about 12 years now, since we very first started with our first product range, you'll know that I have used WOW throughout this time. Their embossing powders, in my opinion, are the best on the market. They are absolutely superb. You get a brilliant embossed result every single time and they really are specialists in this field. Wow are a UK based company and they specialise in making their own embossing powders. They actually produce powder for the greeting card industry as well. So you then know that you are going to get those professional results every single time at home. And they are honestly just fabulous. Like I say, we've worked with them for a long time. You'll have seen that I've got my own colour mixes with them, some of which are exclusive to our website, chloescreativecards.co.uk. So please do have a little look on there and check out all of the gorgeous colours available. Right, so to get started, I'm going to explain a little bit about WOW embossing powders. So the WOW powders that we sell on the website, we sell um, the large jars, which are this, which is this one here, which contains, I think it's 160 millilitres of embossing powder, or the standard jars, which are 15 mil. To be perfectly honest, the standard jars are going to go such a long way. The only ones that I have the large jars in are like opaque bright white, silver, gold, sparkling snow, the colours that I use an awful lot of. The majority of pots that I have are the 15 mil ones. So with WOW powders, they have all been treated for static flow. So it's really, really tempting with your embossing powder to pop them in one of those plastic containers so you just dip your card in and go. Please do not do that with these embossing powders. The powder has been treated for static flow, as have the jars. So what that means is you are going to get less stray flecks on your cardstock. By decanting this into another container, you are going to start to add static back into the powder, which is what we don't want to do. Because that can then cause issues when you're embossing onto acetate and things like that. So always keep them in the little jar that they come in. If you want to return, when you come to sprinkle your powder on and put the excess back into the jar, use a sheet of just plain copy of paper, um, something along those lines, just keep it as paper. Don't be using one of those plastic tidy trays or anything like that, because again, that attracts static that's gonna go back into the jar and we don't want to do that. Because these have been treated so kind of highly to, to get that out of the powder that you don't want to then be starting to add it back in by doing little things like that yourself at home. Another really important thing is if you want to sprinkle um, the powders onto your project with a spoon, please use a metal spoon, not a plastic spoon. Again, that helps keep static out of the powder and is going to give you the absolute best result. So I'm going to talk you through the different types of embossing powder that there are. So we've got the regular grade embossing powder, which is still quite fine. It's pretty much great for all round things for stamping your flowers all such like, that is your standard powder, so that's regular. You've then got super fine, and what super fine means is it's been ground down, so it's a little bit of a finer powder. So that then means if you stamp in text or anything like that, it's gonna pick up all of the detail. If you stamp in a really detailed stamp, that super fine embossing powder is gonna help pick up more of the detail on the image. I am actually gonna go through and stamp and emboss all of these so you can see as well. So we've got regular super fine. We've then got embossing glitter. So these come in a myriad of different colours. So this is basically your embossing powder with glitter added into it, but the proportions are absolutely perfect. With some other embossing glitters, you can find that they've got too much glitter in or too much powder. With WOW, they have got it absolutely perfect. So it's gonna give you that really nice, clean, embossed, sparkly edge to your project. 
Next up, we've got the pearl powders. Now, I am obsessed with the pearl powders and I'm going to show you how to use this and get the most out of it because it's beautiful for creating backgrounds on your projects. Really, really lovely. Then also have things like colour mixes. So let me see if I've got one in my little pot next to me. I don't think that I have this. This one looks like it might be a colour mix. So um, when they're a colour mix, they've got like a colour and a different powder mixed in. So you might have two different colours of powders in there. So it gives you a slightly more speckled finish when you stamp and emboss your image. And then we've also got the pow like powders with inclusions, if that makes sense. So in my range, we have Snowfall, which is like a pearl powder, but it's got really chunky, ooh, chunky pieces of white in there. So it gives you like a mottled effect when you emboss it, but it's beautiful for using on your Christmas cards, hence why we called it Snowfall. So those are kind of your different powder types. So you've got regular, super fine, embossing glitter, pearl, colour mixes and kind of the ones with include. I'm going to call it with inclusions. So if they've got like an ultra high powder mixed in. You can also buy um, your embossing powder in ultra high for some colours. That's like a really chunky grade of powder. You wouldn't use that for stamping with. It's more kind of mixed media. It's not something that I personally have in my craft box. So what you will need to emboss is you're going to need a clear embossing ink pad. I 100% recommend the WOW clear embossing ink pad. When we've had customers that have contacted us with problems with embossing, I can pretty much guarantee it's down to the ink pad that's been used. The ink pad makes such a big difference. It is what's going to grab that powder and hold it onto your card before you heat it. So the ink pad is really important. So I would recommend the Wow Clear Embossing Ink Pad. It's ultra slow drying. It's a nice sticky ink as opposed to being a wet ink, if that makes sense. If you've used other embossing pads, you'll know what I mean. But it really does grab and hold the powder very nicely. There is also a little refill tool that you can get for your ink pad, which again prolongs the life of it. So if you find over time, which you will do, your ink pad's feeling a little bit dry, maybe your embossing powder isn't clinging quite as well. You can literally open your ink pad. It has a little roller ball on the end and you just roll that over your ink pad. And the roller ball helps to work that ink into the pad, which gives you a better delivery um, rather than like a dropper bottle. So you can really work that ink into the ink pad and what you'll find is it'll give you a more even coverage because we've got this fabulous little roller ball. So it doesn't look like you're putting a huge amount on, but really you are, it's coating that ink pad. So that'll keep your ink pad nice and juicy, primed and ready to go. You don't need to do that if you've got a brand new ink pad, it's just if you've been using it for a little while and it's starting to feel a little bit dry. I also highly recommend having an anti-static bag for all the powders are treated for static flow. It doesn't kind of avoid the static on your paper and card. And especially if you want to emboss onto things like vellum and acetate, this is an essential. I use it all the time. It helps to kind of prevent little where you've got like grease on your fingers and things when you dust your card over first. It does make a difference. And in my opinion, it gives you a clearer embossed image. You can overuse anti-static. And again, when I start demonstrating, I'll show you and explain about that. So you're going to need your ink pad and an anti-static bag, potentially the little refill tool as well. That's really handy for prolonging the life of your ink pad. And you are also going to need a heat tool. So the heat tool that I use is, of course, the WOW one. It's got two speeds. So you've got a faster speed, okay, and a slower speed. Personally, when I'm embossing, I tend to just go for the faster speed and go for it. It does have these little vents at the back. You do just need to make sure when you're using the heat gun that you don't cover those because that's your air intake. It does have a little stand as well, so it can stand on your desk like so. So that is your basic embossing tool kit. So but if we start to get into it now, I'm going to show you some basic techniques. I'm going to do some really just basic stamping and embossing to show you how I would use these. I'm going to pick up a stamp. You are probably going to get some sneak peeks at some new products as we go as well. So that's all very exciting. Okay, I'm going to grab in. I've got some white card here that I've just trimmed down. And we're going to just start and stamp. 
So I'm going to take my little antiseptic bag. I do always tend to keep mine in the little grip seal bag that it comes in. Give it a little tap on your card and then rub it over. You don't want to see a load of excess antiseptic on your card necessarily. That is probably about enough. You don't need a great deal of this. So you're going to dust your card over first. You're then going to take your stamp. So this is our country flower stamp that I'm using. I'm going to ink it up with my ink pad. So lots of light tapping all over the image. And this is a clear ink pad as well. So it's not going to look like I've done too much. But then once I stamp it, you will be able to see the image. So you're going to stamp down. You're going to keep one hand on the block and use the other hand to press and then lift off. Then I'm going to grab in my scrap paper and I'll do a regular powder first to show you. So this is metallic platinum regular that I'm using. Some of mine may have a little bit of glitter encapsulated in there. That's not on purpose. It's because this is my genuine stash <laughs> that I use at home. So we're going to take that and we're going to heat it up. So to heat it up, you're going to take your heat gun and you're going to hold your heat gun still. So you want to hold that heat gun still. You don't want to be doing any of this wafting, nothing like that. You want to hold the heat gun still. As soon as you see that powder start to melt and change, you are just going to chase it over the image. like so and that would then be your embossing powder all nicely heated up so if you're new to embossing the metallics are probably the easiest colors to see turn so i'll show you polished silver super fine next so you can kind of see the difference then so with the super fines these are great for kind of just doing anything to be honest stamping your flowers you can use the super fines for your text um, given the choice in kind of gold, silver, white, I just always buy the super fine ones. Um, I just find that's what works for me. And it just means then you've only got one pot of embossing powder rather than two. So we're going to place that down. Press. Now, because I've already anti-staticed, I've not been too concerned about doing it again. We're going to lift that off and then we're going to take our polished silver. You can see some of these little white bits that you sometimes get in the pot as well. That's normal. That's just the kind of static floor material that's in there. Now you can see I've smudged a little bit on the edge there. So before I heat this up, I can go in with a dry paintbrush and just dust that away. Just did a little bit too much of the powder off there. There we go. And give that a little flick. We're going to put that embossing powder straight back into the jar and then we're going to start to heat this image up again. So just using your heat gun, you're going to hold your heat gun still and then once you see that embossing powder start to melt and change, you're going to chase it straight over the image. And it is like magic every single time. So you can see how beautiful that then is when that's embossed. Okay, and as soon as it's done, I'm moving the heat gun away. So that's your super fine embossing powder. The next one that I'm going to show you is embossing glitter. So again, take your little anti-static bag, give your piece of card a little dust over. So just tap off any excess there and then I'm going to take my stamp. Now, something that I see happen so often when I've taught classes in the past is you dust over with your anti-static bag and then you go and put your stamp with your acrylic block over the top of your piece of card and ink it up. You basically going to undo all of the good work that that anti-static bag's just done. So just move your card carefully out the way, pop your stamp down and ink it up. Okay, so again, what we're then going to do is place this down onto our card and press. So you want a nice firm, even pressure all over the image and then you're going to lift that off and then you can pick your embossing glitter. So I've got one here. This is two-tone copper that I'm using. Now with the embossing glitters, you might just need to give them a little shake before you use them 
just to mix the jar up and tap away the excess any excess powder goes straight back into the jar lid straight back on now with the embossing glitters some of them can be a little bit harder to see when they've started to turn so what you're going to do is hold that heat gun still and you kind of want to look for that powder twinkling at you once you see it twinkle you're going to move your heat gun over the image so i'm just moving quite slowly really i'm not going too fast There we go and that looks to me like that is all done so if you've got that heated correctly you're not going to get any glitter dusting off or rubbing off your glitter will now be fixed to the card so another little technique for watching when your powders have turned i'm going to show you a metallic embossing glitter actually because again they're a little bit easier to see so if i take silver bells for example i'm just going to give that an extra little dust i don't know if i've cut my card a little bit small yeah, we'll just about squeeze another flower on there. So again, we're going to ink up the stamp. We're going to place the stamp down onto our card and press. So again, firm even pressure all over the image and I'm keeping one hand on the stamp just so that it doesn't move. Then I'm going to take my silver bells embossing glitter Sprinkle that over and tap away the excess. You can be quite firm as well when you tap away the excess. Okay, what we're then going to do is take our heat gun and heat up the image. So again, holding your heat gun still, as soon as that powder starts to melt and change, I'm moving the heat gun over the image. So hopefully with this one, you'll be able to see how it goes from that dull grey to that beautiful shiny silver okay so that's all heated now and you can see you've got that glitter encapsulated in there as well so those are your embossing glitters okay next one that i'll show you is i don't think i've got a color blends one necessarily i'm going to show you the snowfall one which is the one with the little encapsulations in so this one is quite a bit different actually so you're going to take your piece of card. In fact, I might do this on pearl card to show you because it might show up a little bit better. I'm going to dust over my card again with my little anti-static bag. And then I'm going to take my stamp. I'm going to ink it up. And then we're going to place this down and press. So Snowfall is quite a unique powder because you'll see when I sprinkle this over, it's got like white chunks in it, if that makes sense. So for example, with this flower, sprinkle this over and can you see straight away all of these big chunks that are there? So when you tap the, the ones with inclusions in off, you want to tap it away quite gently. You don't want to be quite as firm with it then any excess goes back into the jar. And it's at this point with this one, because you've got a larger flake of powder, I would use a slower setting on my heat tool. So, same technique applies. You're gonna go in, you're gonna hold your heat gun still. And then as soon as you see that embossing powder start to melt and change, you're gonna move the heat gun over the image. It's a little bit hard probably to see because I've been it on white card. I've got a sheet of black as well that I can show you it on. But you can see it's a little bit slower to emboss. So maybe if you're not quite as confident or you usually overheat your images, using the slower heat setting could be better for you. And then you can see how you've got a more 3D kind of effect on that one. If I pop that down and do it again on black, so this is just some black card that I've got here. I'm going to re-ink my stamp. Again, I've anti-static.
Celtic. Place that down and press. And then lift that away. And then if I take my embossing powder, sprinkle that over. Gently tap away the excess. And then heat this up. So this has got a clear base to it, if I'm right from memory. So then if we take our heat tool, we're gonna heat it up. So I'm starting at this little corner here. As soon as I see that colour start to change and it kind of twinkles at you, that's then when I'm moving the heat gun. So we're just chasing that powder all around the image. And what you can do if you're unsure is just give it a little waft at the end. Missed a little bit in the middle there. I do often find as well, just tilting your paper and looking at it in different lights makes a big difference. I have a daylight lamp at home and that makes a massive difference. So you can see how on this you've got your embossing glitter, but then you've got the little white inclusions in there as well. So that's Snowfall, that's a really lovely powder. Another little technique that I wanted to talk to you about was the pearl powders. Because the white pearl uh, super fine embossing powder is a one I think gets overlooked. I absolutely love it. It is brilliant for doing backgrounds with. So I have grabbed a stamp from over here. So this is um, our Snowfall background stamp. And I do believe this is in the sale actually. So please do hop over and grab a bargain. I've got some white card here. And I'm going to just dust over this with my anti-static. So I'm giving it a little tap and then rubbing it, the anti-static into the card. I'm going to pop that over there. I'm going to take my stamp in and I'm going to ink it up. There's a little bit of glitter on my stamp. So I'm going to ink the stamp up. So lots of tapping all over the image like so. We're going to take that stamp and we're going to place it down and press. So you're going to place your stamp down and then you want firm even pressure all over the image. Like so. And we're going to lift that off and we're going to take our gorgeous white pearl powder. So we're going to sprinkle this over the top. And it doesn't look like much at the moment, but trust me, it comes together and looks beautiful. So if we take this back in, I'm going to heat this up. So again, heat going on the second heat setting, so nice and quick. And I'm just going to hold my heat gun still and just move my heat gun over the image. And the pearl powders are quite dramatic when they turn. So you'll see it goes from kind of a very dull colour to a lovely bright and shiny pearly finish to it There we go, I'm literally just chasing that powder, following it with my heat tool. There we go, and then you can see 
you get this lovely pearlized finish. Now, if you wanted to, you could go in and ink over the top of this and it would resist. You'd get a lovely kind of white pearl snowflake effect. Or I personally love this just as white on white like this. I think it looks so elegant. Lovely for wedding cards, lovely for Christmas as well. So that's your pearl embossing powder. So this kind of gives you a little idea of the different finishes. So we've got our pearl, the one with the inclusions. We've got a couple of embossing glitters here and embossing glitters come in a variety of colours as well. I'm going to show you that as a demo. And then we've got our regular and our, our super fine powder as well. So you can see how this all starts to work. So that is the basics of embossing. One other thing that I wanted to cover and I actually wanted to demonstrate this to show you because we get so many people asking. Your glitters, so our sparklicious glitters, for example, you cannot emboss with. If you want to emboss with a glitter, you need to be using like a wow embossing glitter. So for example, I've got Lavender Luxe here and Absolutely Pink. If I show you what will happen, if I stamp an embossing image in each, that might just make sense to some of you at home. So I'm going to take an anti-static bag again, just over my white card. I've got a little happy birthday stamp this time. Okay, I'm going to place this down and press. And I'm going to cover that with Lavender Luxe. Tap away the excess. And I'm going to grab that piece of card back in. I'm going to re-ink my stamp. Place that down and press. And then if I cover that with my absolutely pink glitter, so this is just a standard glitter, not embossing glitter. You see it clings, okay? But this is where you were gonna see the difference. And this is what makes wow powders so special. So we're gonna grab in our heat tool again. I'm gonna start with the lavender look at the top. And we're going to hold that heat gun still. You'll see it starting to go to a slightly more vibrant purple. That's when I'm just moving the heat gun over the image. So that's all done. If I do the same on this one at the bottom, you'll see the glitter start to blow off. Okay. And then if I take my paintbrush, if I just give this a second to cool, actually that should be cool enough. If I just over the happy birthday at the top, minimal glitter comes off. If I just over this one at the bottom, you can see it's completely gone. So if you're wanting to use an embossing glitter, you need to make sure it's an embossing glitter, not just a glitter. If it is a standard glitter, it will literally just brush off. It'll cling to the ink, but then it'll just brush off. So that explains a little bit about the comparisons as well. So embossing glitter actually has an embossing powder that's built into it, which is what bonds and holds it on the card. Whereas with glitter, you've not kind of got that bonding. I'm just gonna give my work surface a little dust with my flash fluffy duster here. I love this in my craft room, it's so good. It kind of picks up all of the glitter as well, which is great. There we go. Right then. So, moving on, I wanted to show you, cover a little bit more of kind of stamping technique and explaining why sometimes you get a double image or why sometimes your image smudges. So, sneak peek alert time. I'm going to use a brand new stamp that will be coming very soon. So, this is a gorgeous new sentiment that we've got and I'm going to do it on white pearl. Yeah, that'll fit. So I'm going to grab my anti-static bag in again and give my card a little dust over like that. And then we're going to pop that card to one side. We're going to grab in our stamp and ink it up. So this is a new statement sentiment stamp that will be coming this year very soon in the next couple of months. So we're going to ink our stamp up and notice how I'm inking the stamp as well, making sure we've got plenty of ink on there. 
We always say lots of light tapping, but I feel like when I stamp it, it always sounds like a herd of elephants. So I'm going to let you decide which way you want to go with that one. But just make sure you've got plenty of ink on there. And for all I'm tapping, I am pushing down a little bit, but I'm not really condensing that foam. I'm just letting the surface of the foam touch the stamp. So we should have a nice even coverage of ink on there. So we're going to place this down onto our card and press. So again, you want firm even pressure all over the image. And especially when you're stamping a larger image, you want to keep one hand on the stamp and use the other hand to press round like so. So then if we lift that off, we've got a lovely clean image. I'm then going to grab in and I'll use... I'm using embossing glitter on this because for this kind of thing, you can use an embossing glitter. It's quite a chunky sentiment, so I'll talk to you about when to use your super fines as well. So this is one of my favourite embossing glitters, actually. This has hit the dance floor and I love it. It's so, so sparkly. So we've covered that glitter, uh, covered that image. We're just going to tap away the excess and you can see how beautiful that then looks. I'm going to pop that glitter, embossing glitter, back into the jar. And can you see how the glitter's risen to the top? So what I would do is next time I use that, give that pot a good shake before you use it, just to mix the glitter back into there. So what we're now going to do is take our heat towel and start to heat this up. So there is a lot of debate about heating from underneath and things like that. Personally, I always heat from above. Because if you heat from underneath, you've got more chance of scorching your card. Because you're kind of heating from underneath, you're then having to heat the card to heat the powder, if that makes sense. Whereas if you just go in on top like this, you're just directly heating the powder. So I'm just going to work my way around, mind my little fingers. Sometimes I have a little wooden peg in my craft room as well, which is sometimes handy for holding on to your embossing. There we go you can see how we've now got this fabulous sparkly image and how beautifully that has stamped so i'm going to show you now if i put too much pressure on the stamp what would happen so i'll take another piece of card okay i'm going to take my stamp i'm going to ink it up place it down i'm going to stand up so i can get plenty of pressure on this to show you so if i really press really hard and i don't hold on to that stamp in the middle this is like me going against everything i've ever known it's very hard <laughs> hopefully that's moved a little bit yeah it has so we had don't think we've got quite as much detail on there so say we take a uh, super fine powder, for example. So this is polished silver super fine. There we go. You can instantly see the difference. So if we pop that back into the jar, we're gonna heat it up. So your embossing powder is still gonna heat up really nicely. But you can see how you've got this double, kind of double stamped image. There we go. So you can see the difference. So this is the one that's being done correctly, holding the stamp in the middle, pressing around the edge. This is the one where we've got far too much pressure on and you can see it's still a nice stamped image, but it's a lot chunkier and it doesn't look quite as refined. Okay, so that's the difference. Another question that came up in the group was about using too much anti-static. So that is something that's possible to do. So if you're using too much anti-static, your card's probably going to look a 
bit like this before you stamp. Okay, so you've got a lot of anti-static on there and a lot of loose powder. So if we take our stamp now, re-ink that up, position it down. We're going to stamp it properly, so we're going to hold it in the middle and press round. Firm, even pressure all over the image. These are our acrylic blocks that I'm using as well, and they are fabulous because they're nice and thin. It means you're in more contact with the stamp, so you don't have to put quite as much pressure on. So if we then lift that off, okay, you can see the stamp's lifted away where the anti-static is. If we then kind of move this about, the anti-static is going to cling to where the ink is. So if I then take an embossing powder, so I'll do an embossing glitter, for example, Let's take Twinkling Lights, sprinkle that over the top. You can see you've not done anything wrong when you've stamped it. You've got far too much anti-static on there and the anti-static is then clinging to the, um, the ink rather than the embossing powder. So then when we heat this up, you may get a little bit of powder blowing off because there's not enough ink to hold it in place but you're also going to get that really patchy stamped image and it's just because you've used too much anti-static So you can see the difference so we've got this one that's perfect here the black one this one we've used far too much anti-static and it's clung to the ink and this one we've rocked the stamp and smudged and moved while we were stamping so that kind of covers all about how to stamp properly so once you've kind of mastered this i would then head on to kind of stamping onto different surfaces so i've got some acetate vellum and some mirror cards as well and i'm going to show you how to stamp and emboss onto those so another thing actually before we move on that i'm just going to cover is about stamping and embossing your sentiments so if you've got quite a chunky sentiment like this you're good to use any powder at all it'll be absolutely fine if you've got a much finer sentiment like the one that i'm going to show you now you want to use a super fine embossing powder rather than the regular or the embossing glitter. So if we ink this up, using our ink pad, I'm gonna place this down and press. So the one on the left, I'll do in the regular grade embossing powder. Okay, sprinkle that over. This is a new um, verse stamp as well. This will be coming out the end of January. Okay, so that's that one and then I'll do another one in the super fine so if I re-stamp the image with your sentiments as well you don't need too much pressure on them just fingertip pressures enough you can see the difference there it's a very subtle difference probably notice it more once i've heated them so if i then start to heat these up So you can see how this one's a lot clearer with the super fine embossing powder compared to this one, which is the regular. So you can especially see on the words like hope, you've got the detail in the centre of the E, the P and the O, whereas you start to lose that a little bit with the regular, uh, regular grade. So if you're doing finer words, things like that, I would definitely opt for using a super fine embossing powder. 
Okay then, so continuing on, we are going to do some stamping and embossing onto acetate and onto vellum. So to start with, I will, uh, and mirror card actually, I'll take a piece of vellum, we'll start with the vellum. And this is a new stamp that I'm using as well. So this will be one of the Chloe Classics stamps that's coming out in volume three. I'm so organised this year. <laughs> so we're going to take an anti-static bag. We're going to dust over our vellum. I'm going to pop that to one side. I'm going to get rid of that excess anti-static. It's in the background there. And I'm going to grab in my stamp. So this is a gorgeous dandelion stamp. Really, really pretty. Some of you may have this. It's quite an old one of ours. So then we're going to take that, position and press. Lift off. And then we'll take an opaque, bright white, super fine for this one, I think. You could have done this in an embossing glitter if you wanted to. Tap away the excess. And then we're going to heat this up. So it's the same technique as it is on paper card, but the embossing powder is going to turn really quickly. So you want to be nice and quick moving that heat gun, that's it done. If you are finding that you are getting embossing powder cracking or peeling off your vellum, it is common to get some, especially if you're cutting out very close to the edge. You've kind of, with embossing, it's sitting on the surface of the card rather than being absorbed in. That's what gives you that lovely 3D raised effect. If you find it's cracking or peeling, it could be that you are overheating the powder. So if you're holding that heat gun on far too long, you're overheating and overcooking the powder, which is going to cause it to peel. Another common issue of stamping and embossing onto vellum and it peeling is the ink pad. So again, as always, I would 100% recommend investing in the Wow Clear Embossing Ink Pad. Okay, so that's vellum covered. Next up, we'll do a bit of acetate. So I'll do the flower on the acetate. So same technique. You need to make sure that your acetate is heat resistant, okay? Not all heat resistant acetate is equal. Some of it is very staticky where your stamp is going to kind of, you, you're not going to get a great finish because it's too static. We are using at the moment the Creative Expressions one, which we've got on our website. And there's also one on Amazon that I'll link in the description below, which I've used myself before and it's been great. Um, so please, if you've tried stamping and embossing onto acetate before, don't get disheartened if it hasn't worked. So we're going to start off with your anti-static. So on acetate, you are going to need a little bit more anti-static than normal. Okay, the anti-static is going to help add grip for when you stamp, but it's also going to help stop the excess powder from sticking. So if I take the same stamp again, which is this gorgeous dandelion, I'm going to ink it up. Okay, and I'm going to place it down and press. So on acetate, you don't need as much pressure on the stamp. So I'm literally just applying my little fingertips on there. So I'm going to lift that off. Okay, and then I'm going to take my embossing powder. So for a change, I'll use an embossing glitter. So this one's Sparkling Snow. So I'm going to sprinkle that over the top tap away the excess okay and then heat this up again your embossing powder is going to turn super quickly So try not to overheat it and just keep that heat gun moving as soon as you see it change. So you can see the lovely image that I've got there and that's just using fingertip pressure. What's quite common with acetate is it's a very slippy surface. So you either go in without any anti-static at all, which it's doable, but it makes it more difficult. So again, I've anti-static that piece. I'll grab my stamp back in, re-ink it up. 
but what we see quite commonly happening is you go in and you're like really need to put some pressure on there really need to stamp it then when you lift it off obviously because you're on a more slippy surface once you put your powder over you're getting this undefined line okay so it's the same issue as like on the card you're just putting too much pressure on and it's slipping and smudging so if i move that out the way you can see the difference so this is the one that's got far too much pressure on this is the one that's just fingertip pressure and what a difference it makes it makes your stamping look far more professional and just super duper pretty so that's stamping and embossing onto acetate the next question that i got asked a lot was can you stamp and emboss onto mirror card yes yes you can but not all mirror card is equal. So our mirror card, you can stamp and emboss onto. If you've got any other ones at home, do a small test piece. It all depends on how the, the, the kind of um, film has been bonded to the card. So ours is all right to use heating. Some other brands aren't. So please do a little test piece at home. What you can find is when you pop the heat gun on, on it'll either lift the metallic film off the top. The metallic film will bubble and melt if it's not heat resistant or you might just find like we have with ours that it's absolutely fine so just do a little test piece at home so you're going to take your anti-static bag again and give it a good dust over please don't stress about the level of static on here it just looks worse because it's sat on the surface of the card you can buff it off with some kitchen roll afterwards we're then going to take our stamp Again, ink it up, and the principle is the same as stamping and embossing onto acetate. So you're going to place your stamp down and press. Keep one hand in the middle and press round with your other. And then lift off, and you can see I've got a really nice clean image there. If I take my embossing powder or glitter, so this one's sparkling snow again, pop that on, tap off the excess. Pop that back into the jar and then we're going to heat it up. So again, holding your heat gun still. Until that powder changes and then just move and chase it. Okay, so you can see that there how that's kind of stamped and embossed you can then take a piece of kitchen roll or i will just use my sleeve just to buff it off there we go and then it's back to beautiful shiny mirror card now if you were finding that you're getting that double kind of impression again you're putting far too much pressure on the stamp if you're finding little bits of embossing powder are missing you're either not getting enough ink on the stamp stamp or you've got too much anti-static on your paper so again, if I show you this by going in far too heavy handed, really putting pressure on there, really testing my muscles today, you can see how we've got a slightly more kind of smudgy image is probably the best way to describe it. It's not quite as defined as the other one. So it'll still heat up, it'll still stamp, it just doesn't look quite as professional. So the key the key is to pop one hand in the middle and press with the other around the edge. Okay, so that's stamping and embossing onto mirror card. One more thing that I wanted to cover is if you were wanting to die cut this, just be careful when you're running through your die cutting machine. Don't put too much pressure in the sandwich. You've got to think that your heat embossing is sat on top of the cardstock in effect. So you've got cardstock, ink, embossing, and it's sat on there. That's how you get that 3D effect. When you run it through a die cutting machine, you're exerting a lot of pressure onto the paper. So what you're doing is you're stretching the fibres, which in turn stretches the embossing, which causes it to crack. So what I tend to do on my Gemini is your standard plate combination for cutting a thin metal die would be your base plate, your plastic shim, your magnetic shim, your die 
uh, with your card on top and then you cut and play it on the top. I take the magnetic shim out and just run it through at a lighter pressure. That then doesn't put quite as much pressure on the card and causes less cracking on your embossing. The other thing you can do is die cut first and then stamp over the top. Um, so it's completely up to you, but that is what I've tended to find when I've been doing these kinds of techniques. The other thing to bear in mind is if you were stamping, say, these flowers onto your acetate and you're pulling the bottom of the petals up and adding a fold in here, you are going to get some cracking of the embossing because you've, you've embossed it onto a plastic surface, which is non-porous. So just bear that in mind as well. So if you're finding that you are getting bits cracking off on your acetate and things like that, please don't stress. You're probably not doing anything wrong. It's just because you're bending the acetate, but the embossing powder can't bend as well, if that makes sense. It's not flexible. Okay, so that explains about that too. I'm going to show you a couple of more different techniques that you can do with embossing, a little bit more advanced, and then that will be this video complete. So I hope that you've enjoyed this and you've got quite a bit out of it. I feel like I've talked a lot and I hope that you can kind of glean the information from there but I'm just sharing with you guys all what I have learned over my time crafting. So what is that I hear you say Chloe is that an 8x8 embossing folder? Indeed it is. So these are coming very soon as well we've got two designs I'm going to give you a sneak peek if I can find the other one. So we've got decadent dots and fabulous fans okay two designs absolutely gorgeous you're going to love using those. So I'm going to show you how you can ink your embossing folder. Now I've just got a little piece of card, so I'm just going to ink a section. Personally, this, this question was asked in the Facebook group and that's totally fine. It's not a technique that I do a lot of because I don't like the mess, but I'll show you how to do it. So if you want to do it at home, you can go for it. So on your embossing folder, you're going to have a inside, you've got a, a side that's quite raised and then you've got a side that feels smoother. So we're going to work on this smoother side. We're going to take our clear embossing ink pad and like you would ink a stamp, you're basically going to ink the inside of the embossing folder. So you want to get your embossing ink on here. well but what I tend to find is I don't think you get as good effect but it's up to you I'll show you how to do it and then you can try it both ways and see what you prefer at home so once you've got that all inked up I'm not going to bother with anti-static I'm just going to place my card down and go for it when you're doing this technique I would normally use a piece of card that's a little bit bigger than what you want to use because I can guarantee you're going to have to trim some bits away at the edge so what we then want to do is try and get this into our die cutting machine so with my gemini i'm using my two cutting plates these used to be clear for some reason they're now white but they do go through the old gemini so you're going to run that through your die cutting machine like normal then when we grab it at the other side and carefully take this out the ink will hopefully have transferred onto our piece of embossed card. So we can then take an embossing powder. So I'll take Glacia, for example. Oh, actually, I quite like this. I take it back. I might do this technique more. So then you can sprinkle your embossing powder over. And again, you're only going to use the embossing powder that clings. Anything else can go back in the jar. So I'm using the Glacia Embossing Glitter. It's going to go back into the jar. The key with this technique is getting your ink nice and even across the image. Oh, across the embossing folder even. And trying to just be careful when you handle it. That's why I'm saying you need to make it a little bit bigger so you've got somewhere to put your fingers. So then you can just go in as normal and heat it up.
there we go and that is how you then emboss your embossing folded designs okay so that's quite a cool technique another cool technique that i can show you is multicolor embossing so if i take that gorgeous in fact i'm going to use i'm going to give you a sneak peek of another stamp bear with me here i'm going to grab a bit of card so i'll take a bit of crystal white pearl dust it over again with the anti-static let's take this stamp we're going to ink it up so this is again one of the new statement sentiments place that down and press And then we can do a bit of multicolour embossing if we want. So if I take Glacier, what else have I got here? It's going to be a bit of a random combination. Glacier, Lavender Luxe and Iced Caramel. So we can start by taking one colour. We can sprinkle that over first. Pop away the excess. Pop that back into the jar. Then a bit of iced caramel, tap away the excess, back into the jar, and then a little bit of lavender lux. Tap away the excess, back into the jar. There we go. And then we can heat this up. like so and that then gives you a multicolored embossed technique so there is loads that you can be doing with embossing and i hope that that's given you all some really helpful tips and tricks as to how to get the most out of your heat embossing thank you all so much for joining me today and i hope to see you again very very soon i hope today's video has been quite educational for you and hopefully you've learned something new or at least picked up a couple of little tricks and tips I hope to see you again very soon. If you haven't done so already, please do subscribe on our YouTube channel. Then you'll get all of the inspiration coming your way. There are lots of new videos going up and I've got lots of plans for new videos as well. So if there's anything else that you'd like to see that's a bit more of a kind of technique top tip, masterclass kind of thing, pop it in the comments below and I can certainly add it onto the list for later in the year. So thank you all for joining me and I'll see you again soon. Bye.